Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mythic Plus Guide for City of Threats in the first season of The War Within. In this short guide, we'll be going through the main boss and trash mechanics that you need to know about in order to beat the dungeon. In the first area, you can click on the green NPCs to get 15% increased damage and healing for 30 seconds to help you fight some of the mobs like the Silk Binders, which are going to cast a lot of web bolts, interrupt as many of those as you can. However, make sure to save an interrupt for their other cast, which is called Silk Binding, and it turns into a channel that does a lot of damage to the target and eventually stuns them. At the same time, the Venom Blades are going to put a stacking poison debuff on your tank, having a dispel here is very helpful. The Big Swarm Guards have a cast that you cannot interrupt, it puts a debuff on everybody in your party and you'll be taking ticking damage for 6 seconds, and the other thing you have to be careful about is their frontal that you need to dodge. This area also has big herald mobs that are going to put a debuff called Shadow of Doubt on a player, surrounding them with 5 orbs and making them take ticking damage. Upon expiration or when you dispel that, the orbs fly out and if anyone gets hit, they take more damage and get another ticking damage debuff that you cannot dispel. They also have Twisted Thought Scars that you need to interrupt. If this one succeeds, it does a bunch of damage to the target and leaves a puddle on the ground that you need to keep avoiding. The first boss, Orator Crix, has a force field around him, a big circle. If you go out, you're sucked back in and you take a bunch of damage. His tank buster hits pretty hard and he also has a frontal that you have to dodge while still standing in the circle around him. He's also going to cast Shadow of Doubt, the same skill that we already saw, but this time there are two debuffs that go out to two random players. You want to dispel one, dodge the balls and let the other one expire, firing five more balls that you need to dodge while still standing in the circle. At 100 energy, he does a 4 second channel doing AoE damage to everyone in your party and then he drops a big puddle on the ground that you need to move out from. These puddles will stay there for the remainder of the fight, so make sure you manage your space correctly and all of that keeps repeating until you kill the boss. In the next area, you engage a mini boss which has an interrupt and few area denials that you need to dodge, but shortly after he runs away and you have to chase them in the next labyrinth. You do that by following ghosts, getting close to one of them reveals the next and so forth until you manage to reach a spy mob that you engage in combat. You need to kill four of these in order to proceed and their main mechanic is called Void Rush. Short channel that targets several different players does a little bit of upfront damage and then leaves 5 second dots on them as well. Their other mechanic is a frontal, they're gonna cast this, disappear for a second, appear behind somebody else and then cast the frontal, so you need to be quick to dodge it. After you kill it, the next ghost appears and you keep chasing them around the area, avoiding the sentries until you find the next two and murder them as well. Some of them you have to fight with additional mobs, they're pretty insignificant unless you get the webmancer, make sure to interrupt their cast as it is a heal. Next up is the second boss, two mob console fight, VX is going to throw knives at people leaving a nasty debuff that you have to heal through, while NX is going to cast a frontal that you need to dodge. After he casts the frontal he leaves a shade at that location and the next time he casts the frontal the shade also casts one. Keep dodging them until he casts Duskbringer. It detonates the shades and himself in huge circles that you need to get out of. It does heavy AoE damage to your whole party and then at the same time VX is casting the Icicles. Daggers that put the spellable dots to everyone they pass through, which could be quite hard to heal when you combine them with the Disbringer damage. At this point they should be at 100 energy which concludes phase 1, they start dashing around the map, you just need to keep dodging them until phase 2 starts. In that phase there's no frontals but VX is going to cast Rhyme Dagger on your tank. That's a big circle around them that everybody needs to soak, or they can just immune it if they can do so. Then there's a second Rhyme Dagger cast that is going to overlap with a Dustbringer by NX. Another very huge healing check. And if you survive all of that, they're gonna start dashing around in transition phase as they're at 100% energy and go back to phase 1, starting the mechanic circle all over again until you manage to kill them. The next area has a lot of trash, but the mobs there are quite insignificant, apart from the web masters, which have that heal that you still need to interrupt. However, at the end, there is a mini boss that is going to cast Venomous Spray. That puts a ticking poison on everybody in your party and a lot of green swirlies that you need to keep dodging on the ground. He also has a huge frontal, so plenty of movement to do here in order to dodge all of that. 
Once you get into the last building, stay away from the axe on the side as they summon caster mobs that you don't want to deal with. The big test subject mobs are going to cast Dark Barrage, a lot of swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge, and they're going to follow up with Fear Stomping, which does damage to everybody standing close to them. The Surakian Natulers are going to cast Void Wave. You want to interrupt those as they do AoE damage, leave a dot on you and knock you back, which could potentially trigger some of the eggs on the side. In the middle room awaits boss number 3, the Coglomation. Oozing Smash is the Tank Buster that also puts a debuff on them that reduces their healing taken. Vicious Darkness is a cast that is going to do AoE damage to everybody in your party and it's going to summon black orbs around the room that will start crawling towards the boss. You want to soak all of them as if they succeed they heal the boss, but soaking them drops puddles on the ground that do a bunch of damage and also put absorb healing shields on people that you need to heal through. He's going to keep summoning orbs until he gets to 100% energy when he casts dark pools. It does heavy AoE damage to everyone for 6 seconds, so that's a good point to use big cooldowns and defensives. After the dark pools is over, the fight continues as before with him summoning more orbs. There is more trash before the last boss, but it's the same mobs that we've seen before until you reach the room where there are two mini bosses. The Shade Weaver is going to cast Web Bolts, just interrupt those and stack up when he casts his next mechanic called Umber Wave. It roots everybody in place, doing ticking damage, and it's much easier to cleave down the webs if you're stacked together. The second mini boss is going to cast Ravenous Swarm, 6 second dot doing damage to everyone in your party and his other ability is called Tremor Slam, this is a big circle around him, make sure you get out when he casts it, otherwise you're going to die. The last boss is Izo the Grand Splicer, at the start of the fight she's going to summon 3 orbs that are going to chase people around the room. Throughout the fight she's going to keep casting Splice which does AoE damage to everybody in the party. Just heal through that and be careful for when the orbs start moving which is designated by blue swirlies on the ground. When she casts Umbra Wave it's the same webs that root you in place so stack near the boss and cleave them down as quickly as possible as shortly the orbs are gonna start moving and they can easily spank you in the butt. Her other mechanic is Tremor Slam, the same big circle that does damage inside so move out and that also summons adds that you need to cleave down. And you want to do this quickly because if they melee somebody 5 times they explode and do AoE damage so using some CC on them is also quite welcome. At 100 energy she casts process of elimination which slams your tank with the 3 orbs very hard as well as everyone standing in the circle around them and if they survive the fight continues the same as before with her constantly casting splice and alternating between the tremor slam and the umber wave. That will be all for the Mythic Plus guide for City of Threads in Season 1 of The War Within. Make sure to subscribe for more Mythic Plus content and the rest of the Mythic Plus dungeon guides for Season 1. I'll see you there. Now get out of here.